welcome to my talk. Uh, if it happens that I'll become uh, quieter during the talk, please let me know. I'll become louder again. Uh, it might happen. Mm. We will be covering the topic of uh, the material components and how to use them uh, for the most simplest, uh, for the most simple task. Um, okay, so uh, Adrian introduced me, so uh, I'm not going to talk uh, more about me. There is me right in the bottom corner. Um, okay, so let's go straight to the talk. Uh, for start, let's gather some facts uh, beforehand so that we are on the same page. Um, we'll talk about themes and styles in Android for a bit. Um, so I'll talk a lot of putting things uh, in the style or applying some things in your theme so that we understand uh, exactly what those things are. I'd like to introduce them uh, at the start. So if both are collections of attributes, because they are, and are defined as a resource uh, by a style tag, what is the difference between them. Uh, so a style lets us define a collection of values we apply to specific attributes of a given view. Please look at the example here. Uh, the fancy style sets the text view params. Uh, we could set it inside our layout in XML, uh, but we can use the style and everything goes, works fine. So we can set those attributes, Android text size and text color in the XML directly on the view but we can uh, use the fancy style and it still works again. So we set attributes that we would normally set on the view by using the style. Okay, so how the theme comes into the picture here? Uh, it defines a collection of attributes that the system uses to style views. So these are basically attributes that you don't set directly on your views. No view has a attribute color primary nor color accent. Mm. And uh, a part of that, you can also set default styles for all of the widgets that are available in the framework. So, for example, text view style, which can set the fancy style created before uh, as a default style for all text views in, the, in, the, in your app. Okay, so uh, to be clear, styles set the attributes that we'll normally set on a view directly in XML, and theme set attributes that the framework uses uh, to style our uh, widgets later with the default values. So how the system does it? Uh, how does the system style our views with aforementioned attributes? Um, and how is that the uh, attribute uh, seen here? Ends up uh, in a widget like this, in an app bar layout widget. So first of all, uh, we define our bright pink as a color primary in our theme. Uh, then, what the design library authors did for us was to create a style uh, for app bar layout. For each app bar layout that you would like to put in your app, there is a style created by the design library, um, which you can now see on the screen, which sets background, the attribute of a view, to be equal to, a va to the value of color primary attribute in your theme. So as is the default style of your widget, uh, it is then used in the constructor to load those values and apply them during the construction of the view. And this is, uh, as you can see, uh, a path of, the, of an attribute around the system. So it is set in the theme then it is used in a default uh, style, and then it is applied when constructing the view. This is one of the easiest paths. There are more, and there are some quite complicated uh, ones. Uh, but I think that would suffice to say, uh, to, to tell you how the, how the framework does it. Okay, and finally, we can extend styles, both styles and themes, as they are defined uh, with the same resource tag. Um, if we have style named foo and we bunch some attributes there, we can create style named foo.bar. This is the dot notation for extending the style. Mm. And it inherits all of, the, uh, all of the attributes from the style foo and then applies all of the attributes that are defined in this tag, this tag bar. We can also do it via parent notation. 
which does basically the same as the dot notation shown above. But those notations can uh, create a situation when we extend in both ways. Uh, like, like in C++, we can, we can have much, many parents in one class. So there, there is a question to you. Can you tell me what would happen if there was a uh, attribute uh, defined in bar and the same attribute defined in foo? Which one of them would win this multiple extending? How many of you Android developers here, by the way? Are there any? <laughs> yeah, OK, good one. So this is going to be extremely useful for your iOS developers. None at all. Um, uh, material components can be used uh, uh, in iOS development, uh, but uh, the styling and theming that I'm, uh, that I'm talking about is uh, only relevant for Android. OK, so uh, the parent attribute will win over the bar attribute, and all of those uh, attributes defined in parent will uh, be applied on top of those in the bar. OK, so before we move on to the tips, uh, there is caution, bleeding edge ahead. We will be using Material Components version 1.1.0 alpha 05. Um, because there is a lot of uh, things that happened before between 101, 100, and 110. Uh, so all of those changes will be, uh, will, are very useful and I will be using uh, things that changed uh, into those alpha. Um, so we are using the latest API. API. OK, so coloring common UI elements. Uh, this is, theoretically speaking, should be easy, but it's not always. Uh, OK, so there are new theme colors uh, in Material Components theme. Um, those are uh, those that come um, indirectly from older app compact uh, themes. So color primary. Color primary dark and color accent you can maybe recognize if you've done some things with App Compact. Um, I crossed out those that are not no longer used uh, in material design. Uh, and there are also uh, attributes that are defined, uh, the new attributes that are defined uh, only in material components themes. Um, and as you can see, they're coming pairs. So we, ha we have color primary in the top and color on primary, lower, oh, I can, I can show you here. Um, color secondary here, and also color on secondary here. Color background is also defined, uh, but I, I omitted it here. And color on background is shown here, as well as color surface and on surface. Why do they come in pair? I will talk uh, to you in a moment. I will tell you in a moment. Um, OK, so if you would like to uh, color our turbo icons, if you Pay close attention to that three dots on the right. They are not in the same color as the title on the left. It is still white, but this one here has op this one on the right has lower opacity. As you can see here, it's better. The time also changes, but don't pay attention to that. Um, the dots on the right change, and to do that, uh, we have to uh, take one thing into the, into account. By default, the color of the text uh, is that of the title text is text color primary, and the color of icon is color control normal, which is in theme defined to be equal to color text color secondary. So on the left, text color primary; on the right, text color secondary. Two different two different colors on one widget. I don't know who created that and who thought that would be a good idea, but we can mitigate the issue uh, by using the style that you see on the bottom. Uh, style widget material components toolbar primary, we can set our toolbar to have the primary color in the background, and then it uses color on primary to draw the title and icons. So that's why the colors come in pairs. Um, so color on primary is used when you draw some things on the color primary attribute. And as well, this uh, works with color secondary, uh, color background, and so on. OK. If you'd like to color icons on your fab or different, uh, different material uh, design components that use uh, those colorings, then you can just set, set color secondary to whatever color you want. 
and then color sec on secondary to white because that's probably uh, what you will need the most uh, and by default it's uh, defined as uh, black so if you'd like your uh, icons to be white on those components then you can use color on secondary and set it in your theme on your main app theme okay color of the status bar the status bar which you can see uh, above the toolbar uh, so the one with the clock um, this is the why we. Uh, this is why uh, material components keeps the attributes that were used uh, beforehand so with, for compatibility reasons, because color primary dark changing this um, this attribute is the only way to change the color of the status bar. Uh, so if you want to do that, uh, this is uh, how you, you you should go about that. Uh, so using color primary dark um, is the way to go if you'd like to change the status bar color. Okay, uh, now on to setting custom font. Uh, this is uh, one of the things that uh, became, became easy in Android. Uh, uh, not so, not so, not that long time ago. Um, and it's apparently, uh, it's apparently easy, but it, when you mm, dive into the uh, details of setting the font, uh, there are some uh, tricks that you need to know uh, to do it properly. Okay, so we'll cover two cases here whether you have one font variant in your app and you have many more of them. Um, if your project contains one font variant, for example, regular or light, um, you, can, you can set it via Android font family attribute in your app's theme. Um, this is probably uh, the, only, uh, the only case when you set a fa actual attribute of a view on the theme. Uh, and why it works is a bit complicated uh, because the theme um, overrides whatever you set in text appearances and text appearances are um, the way you normally uh, style your texts uh, and also framework styles the text in that way. Um, so if you'd like to set one font family for your app just use the font family attribute in your theme. Um, if you'd like to use a font family, um, so if you'd like to use bold and italics defined in your font, uh, then you can just put them into family and use uh, that instead of your uh, font. Uh, it will work on uh, each of the API levels, but on the API level 27 and above, it will uh, look a little bit better. Mm, okay, but your designers can, uh, may want to use more than one font variant, which is frankly a reasonable thing to do. Um, material theme uses three of them by default, uh, light, regular, and medium. Um, if that is the case, uh, you should use custom text appearances. Text appearances are the styles that you apply only to text uh, attributes. Uh, and you may create some base text appearance for different font, vari font variants, and then extend them, creating different sizes, colors, line height, letter spacing, you name it. So you can create different styles and then apply those text appearances across your app in your views. But you have to be careful. Um, if you'd like to extend um, a, a text appearance that uh, it comes directly from the, uh, from the app compass theme or from material components theme, you have to know that uh, it will overwrite the font family that you've set uh, in, the, in the style that you are extending. Uh, because of the fact that we talked about earlier. The parent also always wins about, uh, above the dot notation that is used here. Mm. So basically you shouldn't uh, extend via parent attribute uh, if you'd like to create a uh, new font style, new text appearance with your font. Okay, but if you set your text appearances this way and just use it in, the, in your layouts, then you can see on the left, it won't be picked up by the, by the framework in all of those places. So the title bar, the settings, uh, and also the buttons just wouldn't pick up the text appearances you've created. And you can be more clever than that. Um, so how to do that, that you can do the thing that is displayed on the right. Um, so all the created text appearances, all the styles that you created, you can pull, it, pull them into your theme. So in your theme, just set the text appearances 
Headline 6, subtitle 1, body 2, all of those attributes are explained in material components. And you can set the default values for them using the styles that you created before. And if you do that, you, this framework will pull the values for you. And for the title, for example, it will use headline, one, headline 6. And for the uh, menu on the right, it will use the subtitle 1. OK, and some random tips uh, at the end. Um, if you have alert dialogues in your app, um, and you've already uh, set all of the attributes uh, in your theme, just as, as I uh, showed you before, um, then you should use the Material Alert Dialog Builder, the class that replaces Alert Dialog Builder. Because if you then use it, it will pull all of the values for you. So again, dialog title and elongated dialog message, as you can see, uh, are styled with the, uh, with the styles that you created. And on the left, when using the old, uh, the old dialog builder, um, the styles are not applied. Uh, so if you're already using material components in your app, remember to use material alert dialog builder when creating dialogues. OK, and for naming your styles, uh, we at DevMobile name our styles by mapping framework names, uh, naming standards to our resources. But if you just try to, try to create such style, then you'll see this, an error. Um, but there is a very simple solution to the problem. If you'd like to name your styles in that way, you can just provide a parent. And the framework will create uh, a style named just what you've uh, written on the, in the name. So text appearance dot material tips. There will be no uh, extending that. Uh, and as you can see, with that, it works. And you can also do it for theme uh, or for uh, widget styles, widget.material tips, as you can see in the example. Um, and the error is gone, and all of, all of it works, uh, and you have your <coughs> styles named as you'd like. <coughs> OK, and that was uh, my final tip for you. Uh, you can use it um, in your apps right away if you use already material components and if you did have <coughs> troubles uh, styling your app. Um, and if by any chance you are an iOS developer, you can also check material components uh, on the website. Uh, there is a library version for you. Okay, thanks. <laughs>